All right, here's our video on rational numbers. We're going to add them and we'll subtract them. Let's just remember that that's the symbol for rational number, Q. If you see this, that one on top, that little one there, that means it's irrational. That's the symbol for irrational. So today, we're just talking about rational numbers. So remember, they form, they have to be able to be made into a fraction that can be made into a decimal. So A and B are any number, except B, as you know from last time, we said cannot be zero, or else that it's undefined. And we talked about that in the last video. So let's look at an example here. Let's say if I had one-fifth, we know this could be rational. It's a fraction, and we can make it a decimal, right? You can bring down the numerator. And 5 goes into 10 twice. It's 0 0.2. 0 0.2 terminates. And so we know if it terminates or ends, it's rational. Right? Sometimes it doesn't terminate. It repeats. Now, it has to repeat with a pattern. The pattern has to repeat. So let's say we had 7 eighths. So what would we do here to make sure it's rational? We want to put it in decimal form. Again, we can bring down the 7. Right? And 8 doesn't go into 7, but it goes into 70 how many times? 8 times, right? And we get 64. Bring down the 6 and the 0. And 8 goes into 67 times. And then we we'll bring down another 0. 40. And 8 goes into 45 times. And this terminates. So it's 8.875 terminates. It doesn't repeat. But they can repeat as long as they have a pattern. So if you have a number like 0 0.01245, 01245, well, you know it's repeating. The pattern repeats back at zero. And it keeps going. Okay. So we could add rational numbers the same way we added integers. And integers are rational numbers, right? So for example, and we did, let's say, negative 5 plus 3, right? So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Now what we did is we took the, the number that has the highest absolute value. So that's the absolute value symbol, right? And the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And we went over these in previous videos. But just to review, it's how far the number is from 0. So here's negative 5. It's 5 away. Negative 5 is 5 away from 0. So that's why the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And the absolute value of 5 is 5 also. So very important when you're doing rational numbers, just like integers, is to determine which one has the highest absolute value. Unless they're the same sign. If they're the same sign, you're going to add them. So if I had negative 3.2 plus a negative 3, well, just add them. Right? Same sign is going to, you're going to keep the sign. It's the same sign when you're adding. Right? And don't forget to line up the decimals. Do not do this. Don't do 3.2 plus 3. It's not that. It's 3.2, and it's negative 3.2 plus negative 3. Right? So this would be negative 6.2. That would be the answer, negative 6.2. And of course, if they were both positive, you'd, they would be positive. So just remember that with addition. So let's look at a few examples with rational numbers. Remember, they could be decimals, they could be fractions. All right, so here, so here we have three operations, right? Well, two operations with three numbers. So remember, we have a negative, and we should do keep change change here. Very important to keep change change, just like we did with integers. Same thing, same thing, keep change change. And we want to do, remember with gemdas, we want to do whatever comes first between addition and subtraction. In this case, subtraction came first. But if addition came first, we would do that. So we keep change this. Keep, we keep the negative 1.5. We're going to add. We always put a plus sign with addition. And then we're going to put a negative 3.5 in. So now they have the same sign. When they have the same sign, they'll have the same sign with addition, right? So it's going to be negative. We'll just add. And it'll be a negative 5 or 5.2. Whatever you want to put that. All right? And so then we, we'll just add that to 2. So it's negative, so it's really negative 5 plus 2, and negative 5 is greater than 2. Negative 5 is not greater than 2, but the absolute value of negative 5, remember the absolute value is what we're looking at, 
So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5, so we know this answer will be negative. And we just subtract, and the answer will be negative what? Negative 3. Alright? Because remember, a negative and a negative will give us a negative if we're adding. And the same with positive numbers. Let's stick that absolute value sign. <laughs> absolute value sign. Alright, alright. So over here we have 2 and a quarter plus negative 5. So they have different signs. So first thing you do again is look for the one that has the highest absolute value. And that's 5. Negative 5 has the highest absolute value, right? As my uh, marker falls. So again, the absolute value sign. There it is. We know that negative 5 absolute value is 5, so it has the highest absolute value. So we're just going to subtract. We're going to subtract 5 over 1 minus 2 and a quarter. And that'll be 9 fourths. Okay. So if we do this, right, that'll be 20. And you do this, that'll be 9. And 20 minus 9 on top. And multiply 1 by 4 on the bottom. So we have a 4 there. And we have an 11 here, so the 11 fourths, which is 2 and 3 fourths. Now you could have also made that 2.25, right, if you wanted to, 2.25 plus negative 5. You could have done that also. Whatever is easier. You could have made them decimals. You could have made them fractions. And again, this would have been 5.0 as a negative, and it would be a little bit of minusing it by 2.25. So we can just think of it as 5 minus 2.25 because we know the answer is going to be negative because the absolute value, of course, is negative 5, and that's 5. Don't forget that 0 up there. So we'll borrow from the 4. That becomes a 9. That's a 10. So we have our 5 there. 9 minus 2 is 7. Line up the decimals. 2.75, which is 2 and 3 fourths. So you have your option when you're doing this. You can make them decimals, make them fractions. Just remember the signs. The signs are very important, and we've done that with integers. It's the same thing, and you know integers are rational numbers. All right, so let's do a few other problems. What if I had 3 and a quarter minus 2.25? Well, the first thing you want to do is maybe you want to make them all fractions or all decimals, or keep them, you know, depending on what you're comfortable with. So if we make this, we make this 3 and a quarter minus 2 and a quarter, we can do that. And so remember with subtraction, it's keep, change, change. Get used to changing the sign like that. And then you won't want to make any mistakes. So basically, 3 and a quarter has the highest absolute value. So we're just going to subtract 3 and a quarter from 2 and a quarter. That's all we're doing. So this is going to be 13 over 4, right? 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1. That's 13. And we're going to subtract this from uh, 9 over 4. Because 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Okay. So if we do all this, right, 13 times 4 is 52. 4 times 9 is 36. And we know our answer is going to be positive. So that's one thing you should keep in mind. We know it's going to be a positive answer. So we'll get 16 on here. 52 minus 36 is 16. And 4 times 4 is 16. So the answer is 1. Let's look back. All right. Now, let's do another problem. What if I gave you, let's see, what if I gave you negative 3 and a quarter minus 2 and a quarter? What would you do with that one? So, let's just make sure we keep, keep that, change that, and change that. Keep, change, change, right? And you should know now we have two of the same signs we just had, right? So, we know our answer is going to be negative. We're going to put a negative there. So we do the same thing, right? We're going to have uh, a negative 13 over 4 here. And we're going to have a negative 9 over 4 here. And we know our answer is going to be negative. So we do the same thing. We cross multiply. We're going to have a 52 over here. We're going to have a 36 over here. Keep in mind that it's going to be negative. Right? And then we'll have our 16 on the bottom. And what do you think we have on the top? We have negative 88. Negative 88 over 16. And we can 
this again we can simplify this to be negative 5 that will give us 80 and there's 8 sixteenths left over and we can reduce this again to negative 8 and a half or negative 5.5 right so this is just simplified and this is what a decimal and again you could have uh, made these into decimals also all right let's do one more we'll do one more over here what if I gave you negative 5.2 minus 6 what would you do with that so first thing you should do keep change change again if it's subtraction subtraction should be addition but if we have something like this you just add remember they have the same sign so just add it you don't have to subtract all right so this will be we know our answer is going to be negative because they have the same sign and this could be a negative 11.2 all it is. So keep that in mind when you're when you're doing subtraction. Make sure you turn it into addition first. Keep uh, notice of what the signs are and what the sign, what the answer will be. So let's do the one with purple, right? Just to make sure you have this down here. Put a little box over here. Why not? So if I gave you um, eight point three plus negative little bar the negative 9.2 well we know our answer is going to be negative we have to have a negative answer because negative 9.2 has a higher absolute value than negative than this positive 8.3 so all you do is you keep the negative there and just subtract don't worry about the signs just subtract just subtract it and then you'll have your answer with a negative so we got a bar that's an 8 that becomes a 12 and then don't forget to line up the decimals when you do that and it's 0.9 so our answer will be negative 0.9 very important here again just find out what has the highest absolute value which is 9.2 so we know what our answer is going to be what that sign is and then just subtract it I'm always subtract when you have different signs if they have the same sign just add and and keep in mind with subtraction you want to keep change change all right, those are rational numbers, part one. Great job.